hello, hello, my name is Kate, otherwise known as Ginger's Greetings here on YouTube and on Instagram, and today we're gonna play a little game called May I Take Your Order. All I know about this game is that there are five different endings, it is under the dating sim tag on itch.io, and also there is a, seems to be a lot of fun gore, so I'm very excited to play. Uh, trigger warning for gore, obviously, and if you want to know more in depth about what that would entail before you watch this video, I encourage you to pause this, visit the itch.io page for them, and there should be a link there, I think, with more description of what types of gore there might be in here. So that said, uh, I'm going in blind, so let's get started. Oh, and before we begin, love this art. I think that's part the biggest reason I clicked on this game was just this art's really good. Um, and just, I don't know, I just enjoy it. Something stylistically about it. Application for employment. That's that's gonna hit me hard. That that's great. Um, being unemployed. All right. I've been filling out a few applications today, and this is the last one. I've been applying to work at restaurants all over. It might not seem glamorous, but I want to see how different places are run. That's that's pretty neat, actually. If I want to open my own restaurant someday, it's crucial to see what does and doesn't work. My friend told me I should ha save my top pick for last, and I should really kick him for that. My hand's about to fall off. I don't know why you would you save your top pick for last in the application process. Maybe, like, just to encourage you to... I don't know, I feel like that would just encourage me to fill out less applications, because I want to get to the last one. It's a pretty ritzy establishment, but it's comfortable. Fancy, but not overpriced. Important clientele, but still kind of inclusive. If you can't make connections here, you're dead. Financially speaking. And the food? Remarkable. I've never heard of anyone having a bad meal there. I gotta know how they accomplish so much. So I try not to be too nervous and fill this out like any other application. My first name is... Key. Uh, like I said before. Oh, that's neat. They actually changed the image. I love... We love uh, indistinguishable scribbles. Um, I think that's a great representation of what my signature looks like. Don't steal my identity. Uh, there we go, Kate. I fill in my address and try not to despair of my handwriting before getting to the personal section. Gender is... Oh, that's so cool! Like, I actually go by they, them pronouns. Um, so this is really nice, actually. I enjoy that. Just that they have options. I assume it's gonna be they, them. And I finished filling out the form. I cap the pen and lean back in my chair. Man, it's a nice to be done. Well, except for heading outside and turning them all in one at a time. Eh, better get to it. Okay, so these are all physical. That's gotta suck. Ooh. All this art is really good. Um, I feel like I'm so used to seeing the visual novel backgrounds that very much look like they were like super drawn on top of an image, like very clean, like, it, don't get me wrong, like, those are still very nice and completely valid, like, stereotypical visual novel backgrounds, but this, it's got a painterly vibe that I just really enjoy. So, like, the little blob people. It's great. Two weeks later, and I'm waist deep in my first Saturday shift at the restaurant. Busy doesn't even begin to describe it. Wait, you got a job in, like, two weeks? Are you kidding me? Screw you. <laughs> After seven hours of the weekend rush, I'm ready to go home. That's fun. I stop off at table six and go through the motions. Thank you for dining with us, sir. My name is Kate, and I'll be your server this evening. He smiles at me. Pleasure to meet you, Mix Kate. Oh, that's cool. I enjoy that. Have you dined with us before, sir? Yes, indeed. I'm quite happy to be back. Just to you this evening, sir? No, my girlfriend will be here shortly. I'll just have a cup of coffee while I wait for her. I'll go get that for you right away, then. No rush. Countless families and couples have gone, come and gone for- Yeah. Countless families and couples have come and gone today, but for the past hour, that one guy's been clogging up table six. Are you doing all right, sir? He checks his watch again. He looks so sad. Oh! Yes, I mistook the time. She'll be here any second. He's been saying that for the past 45 minutes. I tell him to pack it up and leave, but he doesn't have the look I'd expect of someone in his position. 
There's anxiety, but only a little bit, and there's no disappointment. Not a shred of doubt in his eyes. He really thinks. Aw, stood up guy. Excuse me. He looks up at me. It seems he's come to some sort of decision. Thank goodness. But this is a restaurant with crayons, correct? Um, yes sir, we have those for kids. Excellent! A sting of ferocity enters his eyes, one that doesn't quite pair naturally with crayons. One, please, and right if you've got it. Yeah, sure. I'm not about to argue with a customer, so I head to the front. It's not exactly usual, but the guy has been, has been sitting here for half an hour with no phone. I'm caught between pity and irritation, and hope for the upteenth time. That he has enough empathy to tip well in a single cup of coffee he's been nursing. There's a small tin with several crayons. We try to keep fresh ones ready, I grab. I could choose to just be like, no, grab the blue crayon, but I'm gonna grab the red crayon. Because that's what he asked for, and literally, why does it matter? I snatch up the red crayon and go back. Uh, no sense being mean to him. He may be weird, but he's probably having a bad night, too. I bring the crayon back over to him and hand it over. Thank you, Mix Kate. It's no big deal. Hey, are you okay? I saw you don't have a cell phone, but we could call your girlfriend and... Oh, well, that's fun. Uh, no warning, no nothing. He knocks everything off the table and climbs right on. That was, I don't know if it was loud for you, but that was loud for me. What? Sir? Please get down. Oh. Oh god, okay. Uh, his left hand scrawls in the white. Yeah, his deft hand scrawls a wide circle and another, then sections off areas, slicing as though the crayon were a knife. He fills it with symbols. They look almost like zodiac signs. Homo sum humania me nehil alinam puto. Sure. Well, that changed vibes very quickly. It's like I stood up too fast. There's a rushing to my head. There's a pressure, like my ears are going. Going to pop. Okay. Whoa, okay. I am not clicking. Yeah? Ah, uh, the tablecloth rips and there is a spray of sweet-smelling fluid. I leap away from the table as something bursts out. I see why we shouldn't have given up the red crayon. Now, wet spiked appendages are flailing all over, slapping and snaking their way over the windows and doors. They're fleshy but soft, too soft, and they mush and disfigure as they slam against everything in sight. One smacks that the hat off another diner, who continues to eat her meal. Unfazed. Nobody is screaming, and nobody notices me on the ground, arms raised to protect my face and throat, too tight to scream again. But that's okay. The thing is screaming enough for the entire restaurant. It's letting out a dual tone screech, high and low, but I can't discern one throat, let alone two. Crayon thrown to the floor. The stood-up guy in the worst diner ever starts to call out at it. Oh, I love that. That's cool. Worst diner ever. Sweetie. For goodness sake, put your body on. We're in a nice restaurant. It screeches and roars back at him. I know, I know, but... He waves a bundle of cloth at it. I brought you some clothing. And it's super comfy. It slurps up the bundle of fabric and the creature bubbles and draws back on itself, twisting until my cat meows a lot. All right, my cat was meowing, so I had to put on um, her toy in the background. I think it's not gonna make too much noise. Uh, usually Adobe's pretty good at filtering out weird background noises like that, but back to it. It slurps up the bundle of fabric and the creature bubbles and draws back in on itself, twisting and tail. Thing. Wow, uh, first of all, the fact that they changed the background too is really, really cool. Uh, I emerge. You're here! You had me worried, so I figured I'd help break the barrier down a bit. To lay poor you, you have no idea how good it is to see you. When he says that word, my ears finally pop, and my teeth grit. It's a bad word. 
It's not a curse word per se. Not so much a word you wouldn't say in front of your boss. It feels like the wrong answer in a classroom or meeting. That moment when everyone turns and looks at you and you just want to sink through the floor. I want to just sink through the floor. I want to very quietly go get my coat and change my name and move to whatever town is on the exact opposite point of the globe from where I am currently standing. You informed me that the barrier was to be frail on this portion of your world. I will hold you responsible for the trouble. He's beaming at the thing that came out of the hole, but I can't look at it. It hurts to roll my eyeballs towards it, like I'm dehydrated. When I close my eyes, the dark behind my eyelids is so cool and so soft. Huh. There are tears running down my cheeks. I hadn't noticed. The guy, Hendrik? beams and gestures towards the gaggle of eyes and puffy wool. Uh, this is my girlfriend, Teleporia. Impudent microbe. I may choose to craft for myself the form of a creator, a birthing one, but I am capable of far greater creations than your prebubescent females. And far more erroneously... Your inflated ego thinks I would design to refer to you as any form of companion. Alright, um... Dude's a little deluded, I think, into thinking this is his girlfriend? Either that or she's just really mad, I'm not sure. Her words wash over him like a gentle breeze. It looks like she could rip off his face, but her roars just make his eyes brim with joy. We've been dating for about 400 years now, and... Though the long distance thing is an easy bit of an annoyance, we make it work. You're 400 years old? The moment I finally devise an effective method of accomplishing your demise, I will rip your soul from your ever-regenerating body and chew it into gruel. He sits down at the all but destroy table and picks up his menu. But until that beautiful day when I can be with you forever, you're going to need to eat something else. Teleporia stops. She looks at me, and I bounce between eyes, trying to make contact with the one that doesn't stare down into my deepest inadequacies. There is human fuel here. I nod. Her mouth breaks open into a smile? Excellent! You were spared from punishment, Hendrik, if only for the moment. She sits down, but not on a chair. Dozens of her tentacles are still present through the entire room, spikes driven deep into surfaces, blocking the exits. She settles into one of the squishy appendages, looking pleased. If there are no exits, how are we supposed to take your order back to the kitchen? Hopefully there's a tablet. So then, maybe we should order an appetizer? It's not that I can't believe this is happening. I have an open mind. Really, really, this is, I, don't, I think it's a little bit more than open. But as far as sudden supernatural shifts into my life, I was really hoping for wizard school. Or just a plain old haunting? Some ghosts are pretty cool, right? At least with a zombie or something, I'd know the rules here. Yeah, fair. What are the rules with this thing? First of all, just... Art's just... The art's very good. That looks like a comfy sweater to wear. Do I throw rice on the ground to stall her? Will she attack me if I touch her with iron? I'd listen to my gut, but I can't make out anything but general foreboding. Demon? You summon demons, so that fits. But, I don't know, something doesn't quite seem right about that. Maybe she's a... Um, excuse me? Oh! I can barely think, but I can at least fall back on one set of rules. I struggle to stutter out, stutter out the rote reply. W w would you like to st start off with the super salad tonight? I like how they, like, stop it as it goes. That's really cool. The man grins and gives an eager nod. Could I please get the blue cheese salad, and for my sweetie? But Teleporia rolls her eyes and her teeth flash as she cuts in. Hendrik, I've been enough of these sham dates to know that ordering for your companion is rude. His face falls. But it's been ages since you've eaten any food. You're chewing on the fork right now. She gives him a glare and slowly places the slightly bent cutlery back down on the table. Fine. But before he can say another word, she makes her move. I don't want your advice, though. I want the young human to choose for me. Oh, no! He sighs, annoyed. 
but he checks himself before looking at me. I think he knows that she's putting me on the spot. I can appreciate that he's trying to look out for me. I mean, I'd appreciate it more if he could have not summoned some kind of eldritch thing during an already busy Saturday shift. Or at all. I ease my throat open enough to squeak out. Okay, um... Hmm. I have no idea how this is going to end. I... Okay. Salads are kind of sad, and I just can't imagine just giving someone a salad as their only experience. Especially, like, if you haven't eaten in forever, you're probably going to want something like a lamb chili. Um, tomato bisque does sound pretty good, though, but I'm going to go with the lamb ch, ch chili. So... This doesn't seem to mean much of anything to her. Great. And what would you like for your entree? She slams a fist down on the table. My stomach lurches. First, bring me the matter. This physical form requires fuel to sustain itself. I turn on my heel and fly out of there, an excuse to leave. If there are any kindly extra-dimensional beings looking down on me right now, I would like to take this opportunity to thank them. Does that- do I count? I rush into the kitchen. Back in the kitchen, everyone's still bustling about. Other servers are calling in their orders. The ambitious cooks are working. The slightly less ambitious cooks are cracking jokes with each other. They are as oblivious as the customers out front. I can see my manager discussing some menu changes with the head chef. Hey, uh, does anyone else see what's going on out there? But nobody turns to look at me. Hey, I'm serious! What the hell is going on? Are they ignoring me? Do you expect me to just come back here and bring this order like nothing's wrong? I take a sarcastic tone. Yeah, we got a blue cheese and a chili for table six. Just another usual night, right? Without warning, a tray with the order is put down on the counter next to me. But other than that, there's no hit of a glance. No guilty looks. Hey! Nobody even flinches. Okay, yeah, they definitely can't see you, dude. Well, you're not a dude, you're me, and I chose gender neutral pronouns. But anyway, point stance. Dude can be gender neutral, right? Fine. Looks like I'm on my own. And that'll tell you how lovely your eyes look this evening. From your ever effusive sewer pipe of compliments springs something worthwhile. I made most of them myself, but the eye in the center of my head was my reference object. I couldn't even tell the difference. Your anatomy has gotten so much better since the last decade. I'm like, okay, so like, you chose to have all the eyes. It is. Easier when I have a fresh supply of study materials. So I suppose I can remain here long enough to consume some matter. Let no sentient being claim that I do not repay my debts. Well, that's just one of the perks of the job. Teachers can bring home knowledge, cooks can bring home food, and surgeons can bring home spare body parts back to their girlfriends. I can say with relative certainty that that isn't how it works, but I guess that is what you do. I guess you're a surgeon. I would not trust you with a patient. If I find out this last man's name, I am never going to his hospital. I serve to late Boria, her chili, trying not to get too close. Please be careful. It's very hot. Remember, sweetie, that too much heat can injure. Silence, meat garden. I know what to do with volatile heat sources. Oh, God. You look like you're in pain. She flings the scalding liquid across the table and hits Hendrick square in the chest. Ugh. He rushes out to the bathroom, face red from pain. We don't serve our, we don't serve our soups at a heat that could do permanent damage, but that still has to hurt. She closes most of her eyes and inhales, a deep breath, satisfied. When she speaks again, her rough voice has a tranquil tone. Clean it up, human. This is an establishment with standards, is it not? Well, it was, I mutter. The elegant charm might be a bit altered by the sudden presence of giant tentacles. I... That's a bold thing to tell her. She snuggles down into her seat. This is a gift for your owners. This is a silver of my true form. Well, it's lovely. Sorry that you didn't like the chili. Apology unnecessary, human. I enjoyed that immensely. 
She sniffs the air. And it smells nice as well. She dabs a little of the meat on her neck. This body has a concentrated blood flow around the throat and wrists. These pulse points heat and disperse stray molecules of matter, allowing humans to perceive them with their noses. She seems quite pleased with this luxury. So your throat acts as a nose? She wraps the scarf around herself. Now that I think about it, the clothing Hendrik brought for her is all very heavy. A maxi skirt, a thick sweater, and a blanket scarf. The way you're clutching that scarf, are you cold? You may not have my scarf. It retains my heat. I will continue to generate and retain heat. And it will belong to me, not to you. Wow, I take a step back. No, that's all your heat, fair and square. She growls. Happily? Yes, all mine. Hendrik will be procuring more matter this evening, which will continue to power this form. Physical exertion is a luxury, the caloric energy necessary to move. But a digit. She lifts one of her own claws. It's precious. I have gone for thousands of years, lying in wait for the foolish summoners to tear open the rifts and let in the good, good heat from your world. Teleporia leans down on the table, the edges of the scarf trail into her chili. Or at least what's left of it. Is it selfish to be happy that she's disarmed now? I look at the still present tentacles and recalculate that statement. She at least cannot harm me with soup. And that's something. So, human, how do you enjoy generating your own heat? Um, uh, okay, I can really answer. It's good. I'd rather have just turn on the heater, though. It's not great, really. Have you ever gotten sweaty? Or, I like, it. physical activity is fun. Last one. We checked the last one last time. Physical activity is fun. I, too, enjoy hunting. Actual consumption of matter at times comes second to the thrill of pursuing a terrified creature. Well, I was more thinking about exercise, you know, to keep in shape. She stops. Do you waste your fuel on extra heat? No, no, it isn't a waste, it's fun. She hisses through her jagged teeth. The human enjoys this, do they? Yes, it's nice to be able to move, isn't it? She taps her knife against her glass. Well, I suppose. Whew. And Hendrik returns. Getting along well? As well as might be expected. So, thank you for keeping her company. We'll eat her appetizers, and... She shakes her head. I am finished with mine. He laughs. Of course, how could I forget? So then, would you like to move on to the main course now? She just, like, assaulted him, and he's like, Yep, that's her. That's my girlfriend. Hmm. The next part of our meal? Ah, yes, with the larger portions. Patrick points to her menu. So, what were you thinking about? I always liked steak, but I kind of, but I admit that it was kind of thinking about splurging on the. Hey, human Kate! I snapped to attention. Yes, ma'am. Choose. Do it promptly and wisely, or else I will need to consume something else for my main course. Well, I hope it's not time. She's staring at me right in the eyes, and her gaze lingers on my mouth. She stares at my teeth and licks her lips. Oh, are you gonna eat my teeth? Could you eat my teeth? Well, I think you would enjoy. Uh, I've been picking the last options for all of them. Although you have, okay, you have just white clothing, but do you? I don't know. It's got like a, it's gradiented. Um, ooh, maybe she'd like live lobster. Maybe she might like the sound of it. But you know what? I've been picking the bottom option for all of these. I'm going to put this squid ink pasta. The chef's special today is fresh spaghetti with squid ink and Cajun shrimp. She sighs. Squids. I have a special place in my heart for... Cephalopods. Oh, so you added that fifth valve? It's nurturing cuttlefish eggs at the moment. Aww. I went to him for his order. I'll keep up the seafood theme. One lobster, no butter, please. Coming right up. No butter with your lobster. The cooks prepared the dishes as usual and hand them off to me. Just like last time, never making eye contact or reacting to anything I say. I serve... To Leporia, her pasta. And Hendrik is lobster. Spaghetti might not seem like a fancy food, but these noodles are pitch black. I mean, I think they're cool. She seems pretty natural about them, which isn't the worst outcome I can imagine. So, before we go, I go, is everything to your liking? Is the food, um, powering your true form enough? 
Silly Kate, when in my true form I do not consume human fuel. Hmm? This human template, my... what did you call it? Hendrick caught mid-bite and he covers his mouth to respond. Human Sona! <laughs> human Sona. My human Sona. It consumes calories, inhales oxygen, excretes feces, and all the same as you do yourself, I assume. I never expected to have a restaurant patron ask if I breathe and poop, but here we are. But my true form requires something much more deeply sustaining. She stares me down. She looks at my teeth again. She looks me in the eye. She holds the eye contact and waits. I try not to swarm, but my moxie is in inadequate for this situation. She waits. And then laughs. I can breathe again. Delicious! A light dusting of fear. Nothing too overwhelming. If that doesn't strike her as much fear, please let me never ever learn what she does. So you eat fear, then? It falls under my perfume. Purview? Suffering. Swedish true form eats concepts. And she built her human sonos to have quite the taste for them, too. Any form of important emotion can sustain her, but she's picky. I am not. Suffering is the only one is the only thing worth eating. Eating anything else would be beneath me. It's okay, whatever you eat. I love you just the way you are. And I would like you much better with several more stab wounds to the head. Anytime, sweetie. Oh, he looks too happy for that. Oh, okay. Though I managed to sneak away for the next 15 minutes, I know that I'll eventually have to return. I try to strike up a conversation with the line cooks again. So, how do you guys feel about the recent tentacle invasion, eh? Eh? Isn't it cool? Of course, nobody responds. Can you touch them? Yeah, it's hard to really put it into words, huh? No response. Dishes click. I guess the spooky atmosphere has a certain charm, but I don't think it'll catch on with the baby boomers. <laughs> Alright. Does everyone actually, like, refer to them as baby boomers? Conventional wisdom says that they'll, they like elegance or rustic charm. And Midwestern moms are not into dripping fluids. I mean, as a general group. I don't want to assume individual tastes. This gets boring quickly, so after the appropriate waiting period, I head back over. So, thank you for dining with us tonight. I did it. I made it through the evening. I am tempted to not even give them a check, to just rush them right out the door. But I refuse to slip up now. It's been a delight getting to know the both of you. How kind of you. You know, I was planning on heading out, but you know what? I couldn't care less if I attempted. And I am very powerful. I am capable of caring far less than most humans could in their most apathetic dreams. Let's do dessert! Like the music stop. Oh. Okay. I look from his smiling face to Teleporia's cruel one. I know how this goes. Let's make a recommendation. Uh. Frick it. Caution into the wind. Bananas foster flambe. Is my professionalism slipping? It must be. What are we impregnating? Uh, sweetie, it's a figure of speech. I don't have that function this time around. Sweetie, I think they're just tired. That's okay. I think if I want this to be... Really... I think if I want this to be a truly satisfying night for our esteemed void goddess, then she's going to enjoy this dessert. Or at least how we cook it. What is this blathering about? But I can tell I've got her hooked. We cook a table side. With a huge flame. And there it is. I'm not so sure about this. Looks like he's picked up on the pattern, too. Oh, I insist. I don't even need to write this one down. One flaming dessert for table six. I like how his thing on his chest disappeared when it, like, wow. I scramble about the kitchen, grabbing everything I need. Am I clear to do this? Hell no. Two weeks is not long enough to have permission to set things on fire to the diners. But tonight's special, isn't it? I wheel the card over. Feeling a mite chatty, I take my time prepping it to light it on fire. So, congrats on getting out of, what did you call it? The cold place? The void. Void! God, what's it like in there? Dark, cold, mostly barren. 
blocked for something approaching an eternity with nothing but your own thoughts. Unless one can become creative. I do my best to make creatures to fill it, but it is a vast expanse. Literally endlessly big. But with nothing in it. Yeah, I caught part of your conversation before. You made your body, right? Indeed. When rifts become open, I am able to seize not only heat, but stray matter. I model the majority of my creations after your carbon-based life forms. But modifications must be made. I bet, if the void doesn't have heat or any of its own matter. You need to make creatures that don't eat or breathe, right? Good human. I model most of them after myself. And you eat concepts. Yes. After billions and billions of years, I have evolved over a million species of void creature. Nearly all of them feed as I do on the concept of suffering. So it's an endless barren place with no light, no heat, where the only things that exist just go around preying on each other's suffering all the time? Yes! Oh, that is an expression. You've got heart eyes going on. Just, this art is so cool. It's really cool. Is it not marvelous? And someday, human kit, there will be a rift large enough that it is not only tiny scraps and stray humans which fall through, but your entire plane of existence. You will enjoy it. Wouldn't I, er, hate it? I got distracted there for a bit, but I grabbed the rum. Can't caramelize it right without a pretty flame. I mean, I don't enjoy suffering. You'd be surprised what humans can get used to. I used the wrong English word. A closer translation might be... Resignation. You would become resigned to an existence saturated with pain. And joy isn't the correct term. Unless you are a distinguished cluster of miswired brain signals. Love you too, sweetie. Ugh. I know what you're doing, Hendrick. Mm -hmm. You think, if you can keep delaying me with fancy dinner, stolen body parts, and gentle words, and rough <laughs> sex. My god. Could we not talk about... Yeah, maybe don't talk about your sex life in public. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> she places a hand on his arm. That you can stop me. You are always disgusting. Best an appealing opponent. Look out! And I light it up. The flame shines in her eyes. And I can feel the heat coming off it. Okay, so he's dating her to delay things. That's fun. Delay the inevitable. I should probably be keeping a close eye on it to make sure it's cooking properly. But looking over to Henrik and to late Oria, they're holding hands. So simply and happily. She's gripping his hand tightly from joy. And then she jerks him across the table. Straight into the flaming cart. Now that burn, that's one that could cause permanent damage. Though he may be lucky that's the worst thing that happened to him tonight. He executes a perfect stop, drop, and roll, and soon the flames are out. Oh, okay, that's a little, um, a little gory. Oops. Uh, yeesh. Though he's far from unscathed. Human, this was a fantastic dinner. Bring us the statement so that we may repay you for your noble worship and gifts. I salute and wield what remains of the upturned card away. It's not long before I return with the bill in hand. He takes the check. He seems to do a bit of calculation in his head. Then lays down some cash. Well, this evening wasn't a complete waste of time and effort. Organ ravioli. Hendrick looks up at her. Oh, that's... <laughs> he called him organ ravioli. <laughs> I love that. If I call my girlfriend organ ravioli, I wonder what they would say. You may have one short, friendly embrace. He jumps to his feet, arms wide open to hug her. And one of her tentacles slams into him, throwing his body across the room. It slams into the wall and ragdolls to the ground. Hug transaction complete. Oh no, did, did you just kill him? She heaves a sigh. Would I were so lucky. No, human, I have merely rendered him unconscious. That's good. Via severe cranial hemorrhaging. That's bad. He will sleep it off. I worked his limbs before. He can take it. Oh god. She almost looks fond. She gets up, walks over to him, and grabs him by the foot. I suppose it is time to return him to his residence. She perks up. Or I can abandon his body in a trash unit. Perhaps nobody will find him and he will be placed inside a trash compactor. As she turns away to drag 
As she turns to drag him away, I ask, Miss Caliporia. She turns, Quizzical. Human, I am departing. You've made it through this evening unscathed. You have little to no ability to comprehend how fortunate that makes you. But I suggest that you make an attempt. I clear my throat. I, uh, think I'm trapped. I gesture around the restaurant. Oh, yes! I had forgotten that your role usually has even more light, does it not? She shrugs. Well, I had no hand in this. And with that, she waves aside a tentacle and marches through the front door. Hendrick's head thuds against the ground as she walks down the staircase and out of sight. When I hear the front door close, another server bumps me in the shoulder, stepping past. They give me a dirty look and keep heading their way. Just like that, I'm back. I get moving, clearing the table, scooping up the check. I check the tip. 40%! It might not cover the emotional distress, but it'll cap off the shift well. This was quite the experience. But for my own safety, I think I'm going to skip two weeks of notice. I came here to learn something new. And I'd say that goal was more than accomplished. And Hank 4, a hug goodbye. Okay, so we're back here. I'm honestly very tempted not to even include the blue crayon route because it only changes like maybe like two words of dialogue and I guess if you guys are that curious, you guys can download the game yourselves. I think you can even play it. I don't think you even have to download it. I'm pretty sure there is an option to play this game just online. So you guys are free to do that. But the blue crayon route does not seem to change anything. So we're going to go back to the red crayon to keep it consistent. All right, we went with the lamb chili. So let's go with uh, the Caesar salad. That's not something we could throw at him. So that's going to diverge at least a little bit. It doesn't seem to do much of anything for her, but hey, who can go on with the basics? One look at Hendrick and I can tell. Me. I can go wrong with the basics. He heaves a sigh. And what would you like for your entree? Or she slams a fist down on the table. My stomach lurches. First, bring me the matter. This form requires physical things to sustain. Repeat the dialogue. Every dip, turn on my heel, fly out of there. Rush to the kitchen. All right, so we serve her her salad. Just lots of going to the kitchen and realizing, yeah, everything, people don't see us. We're serving her her salad and we try not to get too close. I'll be back in a moment. I need to wash my hands after that summoning. Before I'll ever feel clean again, I need a hot shower, a Brillo pad, and therapy. That's fair. Teleporia purses her lips and pokes at the lettuce of the fork. Foliage. Oh no, I look at her teeth, that cruel glare. Of course she's a meat eater, what was I thinking? I need to rescue this quickly. Our Caesar salad also comes with anchovies, which you'll see there. I gesture towards the one of the small fish in her salad. She spears one with an elongated claw and peers closely at it with her cluster of eyes. If you were to diagram your local food chain, where might one, where might one find this small creature? Er, I guess it isn't a planar plankton, but it's relatively towards the bottom. She snorts. A meager offering for an establishment claiming to vend luxury. She picks the fish out and chomps them down before shoving the rest of the bowl away, disgusted. Okay, so it seemed like the only thing changed is she didn't really like the salad, and uh, the dude still walked away anyway. So now we're just going to go... Yeah, I don't enjoy uh, generating my own heat anyway. Have you ever gotten sweaty? I fan my collar a little. I could really use a cold drink right now. She gives a quizzical look. Are you implying that the times to generate too much heat? I nod. In the summer, when the sun gets closer to Earth, everything gets hot and gross. Humans can get so warm they die. Her eyes open wide, both of them. All of them. Do you catch fire and burn? No, it's not like getting burned, it's just too much heat for the whole system, I think. And you cannot simply uncover yourselves and release the heat into the vacuum of space. I shake my head. No, ma'am, the vacuum of space is too far away, and in the summer we're surrounded by too much heat. Ha! Your creator failed to take the season to into account. Tell it to mind that on the next draft. I assure her that I will, and out of the corner of my eye, I see Hendrik returning. And Hendrik returns. Alright, for our next choice, not our last choice, but our next choice, um, 
So we chose the squid ink pasta last night, last time. I'm picking all the middle options basically at this point, I think. So we're gonna choose the live lobster. Hendrik gives a bit of a nod. That's my order too. It's been a while, but this is the special night. What? At what point did humans discover the joy of consuming live creatures? Wait, she doesn't think I'll serve it to her while it's still. No, sweetie, I'm afraid that most of us are still a touch prudish about that sort of thing. But, but they have a tank here, so the lobster's fresh. Fair? Nothing is as fresh as squeezing the life from a creature with your jaws. I mean, you could just hand the lobster to her. Where is your face look like that? Feeling it arrive and struggle in fruitless attempt to starve off the icy curtain of death. She's looking straight at my throat. Two lobster dinners coming right up. Didn't, didn't you eat fear? You don't squeeze the life out of people. I rush away as quickly as I can. <clears throat> I try to convince the chef to let me serve one lobster live. I feel downright ghoulish, but between me and the crustacean, I'm going to defend myself every time. But her reaction's the same as last time. She prefers the dishes as usual and hands them off to me, never making eye contact or reacting to anything I say. What is this? She lifts up the extra utensil. It's the lobster cracker. Use it to crack open the shell. Hmm. This is a fair idea, but it's such a waste, Kate. Do you use this on a deceased creature? But well, the food is dead, isn't it much easier to consume? She waves a claw at me. Not if you have to crack it open anyway. Hendrik is already digging the meat out of his. I like it. It's soothing to have a little tactile activity as part of your meal. Caliporius claws slip on lobster cracker. Meat shield, how are you employing your tool? Well, you put either end of the metal bit over. Raise it up and demonstrate. He holds the lobster cracker and one leg up, leaning forward so they're close enough for her to get a good look. She holds her as pantomiming his actions, then promptly grabbing one of his hands, wrapping the cracker on his pointer finger and gripping it tightly. Oh! His finger juts at an odd angle, and blood drips onto the torn tablecloth. She crack she cackles and throws the metal tool at his head. Fool, I can easily employ such a simple item. Ah. He's leading away from his injured hand, the other on his face. Mm, right you are, you got me. He sure does look embarrassed. It's really hard to tell through the pain. I mean, that is an expression of pain on his face, right? I guess she got him? He breathes heavily, trying to get himself under control. As though to prove his point, he goes right back to eating dinner. As though nothing were wrong. So, before I go, is everything to your liking? And on the last option, we're gonna suggest drinking. Because I definitely like alcohol. It doesn't take long of knowing me to know just I don't like alcohol, but each to each his own. And since nobody seems to notice what I do this evening, I'll just grab a glass for myself and pull up a chair. And she can eat up all the discomfort she wants. I like this human. I'm keeping them. Sweetie, no! But I'm already off, grabbing the bottle and a trio of glasses. I slam them down to the table and fill them up. I bet that you hadn't had a good drink and, well, how long have you been stuck in that cold place? She grabs a glass. Void. Void, God, what's it like in there? She knocks back the brandy like it's whiskey. Probably goes without saying that she doesn't drink much. I did many look at her scene because it didn't let me skip it because there was like two lines of dialogue that hadn't changed. Okay, we're at the point just right after they talk about their sex life. So she's placing a hand on his arm. If you think you can stop me, you're as, you're as always disgusting but an appealing opponent. And then she slumps over the table, snoring loudly. By now, I can tell. That is a smile on her face. He turns to her side, brushes the hair out of her face, and wraps her up in her scarf. I'm so sorry, Miss Kate. This must be an awfully difficult table for you tonight. I didn't think to give us someone so new. Yeah, the manager didn't warn me that we had special clientele. I was not even close to being brief for it. Well, you handled it marvelously. If you'd like to bring us the check, I think it's time to get her home. I nod and clean up the bottle and glasses. You know, I just realized... This is not a dating sim. Why is this in the dating sim category? I signed up to date some weird creatures, um, but I'm just...
dealing with these two being on a date. I want to be the one on a date. So are you going to lock her up or something? He chuckles. No, this is just a sliver of the entity deep in the void. She can always make another body. But when she recalls the memories and experiences from this one, I want to make sure she knows. She can always switch diets. I ponder that while I get this check. She's been around longer than our species. Longer than our planet. So no matter how old Hendrick is, it's nowhere close. But when I bring the check back... Mr. Hendrick? Hmm? I'm rooting for you. Keep doing the hero thing. He laughs. All the way through, signing the check. Loudly. My dear Mix Kate, I assure you, I am not being noble. It's very, very selfish. He looks at Teleporia. She grinds her teeth a little, probably dreaming of biting someone. He scoops her up, making it look easy. She must be lighter than she looks. Or he's just stronger than he looks. And for a moment, I think he's going to kiss her on the cheek. But he doesn't give her anything more than a loving gaze. He carries her out of the restaurant, and the second they step outside the door, everything goes back to normal. I'm glad he's here for consent. I start busting the table. The tentacles may be gone, but the tablecloth is still a mess. I get it now. That closed space must be part of the restaurant. To keep people safe from their more bizarre guests. Now that they're gone, it'll be up to Hendrick to keep everyone safe. I bust the table and sneak a peek at the check. Dang. An 80% tip on the check with lobster and a full bottle of brandy. Wowie, we did a good job there. Makes the idea of staying here pretty tempting. I am honestly considering it. But first, I'm going to need to have a long talk with my manager. Normally, that sort of conversation would be intimidating. But I am bolstered by the memory of Taliporia's grin. And I grin too. I can handle it. All right. We got only five sweet and dreams. All right, we took the red crayon. We've done both the bottom options. We're gonna do the top one now. We're gonna get the tomato bisque. This doesn't seem to be much of anything to her, but we make a pretty killer tomato soup here and it's popular with kids. I have no idea what flavors would take to go to her mouth, meat, meat and suffering. Uh, so it's best to stick with something with broad appeal. My eyes flip back over to Hendrik and there's mild disappointment on his face. This isn't what he would have chosen. But it looks like he can work with it. Okay, just because you're like, yeah, maybe she won't like to eat it, but uh, she can definitely throw it at me. All right, so uh, basically that really didn't change anything. Let's see. We're gonna pick, the, again, the top option. We're gonna pick the top option again. It's good. I'd rather just turn on the heater though. When it gets cold, I can't bring myself to do much of anything, so I'll just turn up the front thermostat. She slams a hand down. No! This is unacceptable, lazy human. In the void, there is no heat. There are no suns off of which to leech like some creature that lives off the of blood of another. I don't think she knows that the verb correlates to an actual animal. You need to be more grateful. And Hendrik returns. Nothing changed there. Um, so now we're at the next option for the main dish. So we're going to go with a beautiful porterhouse steak. Steak? She certainly recognizes that word. And I uh, wouldn't normally recommend doing this, but there's a bone or a piece of cow skeleton in the steak. Maybe you might also be able to eat that. Apparently, yes. And I'll have the lobster, please. He looks a little embarrassed. It's a night for celebrating, you know. Hey, I don't mind. Rack up that bill. He chuckles and I head off to the kitchen. The cooks pour the dishes and hand them off to me, just like last time, never making eye contact or reacting. I am but um, a single person in the endless void, and no one can see me at all. Uh, I've got a lobster for and cracker for Hendrik, and a steak knife for Taliporia. You know she's not going to need that. The serrated edges gleam in the murky light. Is it really going to need to handle up and like this over to her? She could murder you without it. I'm on my own here, and nobody will help me if she attacks me. Or maybe since nobody else will help me, I have to deal with the situation myself. 
She hasn't made a move to harm me yet, but she did do a number on the dining room. It may only be a matter of time. Okay, we can have a knife. Wow. As I look over to table six, it's time to make a choice. What should I do with the knife? Wow, um, I am now seeing where the other three options probably come in. Okay, so I was wondering, because a lot of this stuff didn't seem to change that much. But now I'm like, okay, we've got three endings left, and there are three options here. So I guess the rest of them might not matter that much. So we're going to give it to her as though she were a customer first. Fighting them seems like a pretty bad call. And there's no sense in making things really awkward, right? The night's been going surprisingly well. And yeah, I'm going to count not dead yet as surprisingly well. I serve the dishes as usual, placing the lobster cracker and fork by Hendrik, and the steak knife next to Taliporia's plate. She glances at it, but not for more than a second. The only thing she's intent on attacking is her dinner. Bloody juice flies from the steak, dripping everywhere, pulling in her lap, sprinkling into her seat, flinging onto the tablecloth, speckling the crayon lines, which start to buzz slowly. Should I call this to their attention? Let's call it to their attention. Um, excuse me, your summoning circle? They look up at me. I point to the table where the wood's already starting to begin to simmer and warp. Oh, sweetie, you're opening the rift back up. He scrounges on the floor for a moment before sitting back up with the crayon. We watch as he crosses up a line here, smashes a line there, until the table looks, if not normal, then at least... Euclidean? I know this is a good time to retreat back to the kitchen, but I can't help but ask. So, did she close the circle back up? It looked that the lines were already smudged before this, so... How precise do they need to be? He chuckles and picks up one of the lobster claws. This wasn't a circle for summoning or making a connection between realms. He places the claw inside the lobster cracker. The circle just eroded the barrier in an already weak location. Usually, this place's owner keeps the doorway nice and clear. Oh well, mistakes happen, right? Just let her know to have a look at it, okay? Absolutely. She and I are gonna have a long talk. <laughs> it was no trouble. He starts to squeeze the cracker. If you know how anything works, it's easy to destroy it. The shell snaps open and he starts to dig the meat out. Taliporia appears at his hands, watching closely as he dismantles the creature. Would you like some? Pa. And a waste time preparing my own meal. My beef stick is delicious, peon. Suit yourself, but you're missing out. On what? Steak is filled with calories for fuel and proteins, which are building blocks of DNA. Name one thing that makes your meal the superior dish. I start to take a step back. They're eating. I can leave them in peace. Time to get back out of here before... Human Kate. Great. Yes, ma'am. Remain here and bear witness to my would-be mate's crushing defeat. Yes, ma'am. There are a few things I want to want less to stay in the same area as these two, especially if they're going to fight. Sweetie, you know I would never want to argue with you. I respect your opinions at all times, even when they're wrong. Oh, no. I am a deity. You cannot comprehend the depths of my knowledge. If I should make a statement that it is surely so. Oh yes, she is so deeply infallible that her first time out in public in the 1800s, she ran screaming from an accordion player, literally having literally never seen an untold millennium of existence anything like it. I guess she was lucky they weren't pipes, huh? Wow. Ah! She lunges across the table. Um... I think the dialogue's a little messed up here, so we are screaming in our head, and Teleporia is narrating she lunges across the table, stick knife flying. Uh, before he could even move, she stabs three times, knife driving down to the hilt with each thrust. Henrik is narrating now. Henrik coughs, blood dripping down from his chest. He didn't move a finger to defend himself. He is talking about himself. One of those stabs must have gotten him in an organ. And it's not like he can't feel it. His face is skewed up from the intensity of the attack. Ah, uh, I suppose that was uncalled for, wasn't it, sweetie? I'm sorry I missed you. 
what you said because it sounded like you were spinning your lies to the human. Never, darling. At a complete loss, I pull an extra napkin from my apron and hand it over to Henrik. Just have a napkin. For your everything. So, human, I have won the argument. I'm uh, going to say yes. Pretty definitively. Ha! Now, knifely, she picks up her steak and rips the chunk off with her night teeth. Let that be a lesson to all. You weren't even using the knife in the first place. I won't be forgetting that anytime soon. So, before I go, is everything to your liking? Nothing has changed from... Like, the, like giving her the knife didn't actually result in any ending, from what I can tell. So we're gonna recommend the chocolate torte for the delightful couple. Must. Remain. Professional. Everyone loves chocolate. Go with the safe option. Don't screw around when you're so close to the end of this. So, close. Bring it on, Mixkate. The torte is here do better after a few hours of setting up in the cooler, so they aren't made to order. I grab a couple and of, uh, yeah. I grab a couple and some spoons in return. Tally Poria doesn't seem to be a fan, but at least she doesn't make a scene. Hendrik asks for the check, and I rush off and get it ready in record time. He takes the check. He seems to do a bit of a calculation in head, then lays down some cash. Well, this evening wasn't a complete waste of time and effort. Organ Ravioli. Hendrik looks up at her. You may have one short, friendly embrace. Okay, so we got the sending again. I'm really not sure how to edit this because a lot of these options don't actually result in anything changing, at least really drastically. It'll be the difference between saying like bisque and soup or something like that. But to give a general recap, at least as of right now, uh, we've gone through, I'm going to get rid of it and I'm going to give it to tel Teleporia. And so if you give it to Teleporia, she'll stab him. And if you don't, basically nothing happens and it continues as normal. Because there seems to be another route down that line where you don't tell them about the summoning circle, which is like fizzling. Uh, I'm going to go down that one first, and then the last one I'm going to go down is to kill Teleporia. Because as far as I know, those are the only options I haven't actually done yet. And I still have three endings I haven't gotten. So we're going to skip through this, and we're going to say nothing about the summoning circle. I say nothing and finish serving their food. As I do, I can see the wood warping like putty until something starts to push against it from beneath. Oh. Oh, that must be one of the creatures she's made. That's fun. A tentacle shoots out. It looks like... It looks much like Taliporius, but smaller and spikeless. What? The barrier. It's still weak. Ugh. Can I not have one night to myself? She flips the steak knife in her hand, holding it blade down. And begins to slash at the tentacle. Stop! Acting! Up! For... Attention! Well, that's toxic. She, uh, it squeals, pathetic and defeated, knife buried in it down to the hilt, before sinking back into the rift. Hendrix snatches the crayon up from the floor and scrawls out the circle. The familiar, if broken, surface of the table is once again visible. I really wish you weren't so harsh with them. And I wish you'd stop trying to be their father! Well, I suppose it isn't easy being mother to an entire ecosystem. No, knifeless, she picks up her steak and rips a chunk off with her teeth. Is that why God isn't, like, we aren't allowed to, like, interact with God and God doesn't show his signs? Because it'll be like, Dad, my life sucks, help me. But that be a lesson to all. I won't be forgetting that anytime soon. Alright, so we gave him the chocolate cake thing, and finally, finally he fills out the check. Let's see what happens now. So, sweetie. Mediocre food, boring company, not enough of my preferred sustenance. Sounds like a pretty bad Yelp review, but it's not the end of the world. You had a steak, you like that. I'm burning the whole place down. Okay, no, that's not great. Sweetie, no. She launches a tentacle at him, throwing him across the room and pinning him to the wall. And with the other, she breaks a light fixture, drunks her napkin in the table's olive oil, and stuffs her napkin into the broken circuit. Not again. Why am I not surprised this has happened before? She lumbers out of the restaurant as it burns. I like how his blood stain is actually just like a coating on top of him, but it's still lingering. I don't remember much else from that evening. Oh, hold on. 
I don't remember much else from that evening. Coughing, someone carrying me out of there. Lots of panic. Perhaps it just took the building burning down around them to get everyone to notice. The restaurant shut down, and I didn't get any forwarding numbers. I can kiss that reference goodbye in my next round of applications. When I check the pockets of my ring uniform, I find some paper. Oh, it's a check in the tip. 20%. Nice. I mean, it doesn't make up for losing my job. But I appreciate that he understood that I tried. I like that the minimum he sends to give is 20. And yeah, his blood is just there still. And me too. Unsatisfactory service. All right, so we got ending two last time. And so we're going to see if we give her everything we know that she likes the best at this point, And that's going to give us a different ending. So we're going to go with the lamb chili for this one. Where I like a physical activity is fun because I think that was her favorite response. She liked the porterhouse steak. Okay, yeah, she liked the steak better than lobster. She thinks steak is better than lobster. So we're going to pick that one next. I'm going to save this option, um, trying to kill her. We're going to try to... We're just going to give it to her as if she's any other customer for now. Tell them about it so it doesn't change anything too drastically. And then... Let's see. We know she likes this option. Caution into the wind, bananas foster flambe. And he knows. Okay. We've had a lovely time, and I think... Oh, no, no, no. I think I've got the two of you figured out by this point. And I think if I want this to be a truly satisfying night for our esteemed avoid goddess, then she's gonna enjoy this dessert. Or at least how we cook it. What is this blathering about? But I can tell about her hat. We cook at table side. With a huge flame. And there it is. I'm not so sure about this. Looks like he picked up the pattern too. Oh, I insist. I don't even need to write this one down. One flaming dessert for table six. It'll be a shame to waste something so tasty. But it's the best to make this the way that she really wants to eat. Hendrik, you're always begging me to share my dessert with you. Okay, right, here's where it changes again. By this point, but by this point, I expected it. I can sense a pattern. You don't get fired to a creature that loves suffering without expecting someone to get second degree burns. And he's trying to stifle a laugh, but it's pretty obvious. He loves it. I think he's just trying to keep up appearances. He executes a perfect stop, drop, and roll, and soon the flames are out. Yeesh, though he's far from unscathed. Human, this was a fantastic dinner! Bring us the statement so that we may repay you for your noble worship and gifts! It's exciting, so we gave her everything she wanted, and we found out he likes the pain. Alright, that, that's not weird at all. I salute and wheel what remains of the upturned cart away. It's not long before I return with the bill in hand. So, sweetie. Abysmal choices. Meat soups. Flaming fruits. Bring additional fire so I may raise this entire city. What? But you liked that option. You liked them all. She laughs. I just human. I like how we just, they know. They know that you're specifically trying to find all the right answers. Why would I wish to rob myself of the future enjoyment of dining here? You nearly gave me a heart attack. <laughs> Should your organs cease, kindly deposit yourself in the nearest rift. I would be pleased to craft your matter into new species. Eh, let me finish using it first. I've got plans. Future well, I would be most displeased should my waiting be for naught. Henry puts his very, very bloody napkin on the table. Looking at him, battered, burned, and bloodstained, there's a vague sense that I should be doing something. Getting a first aid kit or calling an ambulance. But that right there is just normal. That's what's normal is for them. That's what their flirting looks like. And you? She turns to face him. Surely the world will not thank you for any continued services of stalling me. But, as you persist, and as your form does not look entirely disagreeable this evening, I find it acceptable to engage in the ritual of mouth-touching. Okay, so they're gonna kiss. Okay, I mean, the hug was just a slap with a tentacle, so we'll see what this is. He springs to his feet, even though it looks like he should be stumbling over. Sweetie. I... It's just sliding across the screen! She moves in for the kiss, and of course it's on. 
but I don't know. Feels right, seeing them together. And who would have guessed that she was capable of being gentle? Maybe that's just the way the love is. Oh god, looking at that. He's all playing on there, goes half his face. Holy crap. Oh god, that's, that's really bad. Why is he still smiling? Looks like she even took a muscle or two with it. She gives it an she gives it an affectionate nuzzle. I'll be waiting for your vehicle. Do not keep me long. It's hard to tell with his lower jaw missing, but there's enough cheek muscle left to see a grin. Do you want a bandage? Or he shakes his head and gets to his feet. He pulls out his wallet. He looks up at me and through the blood. He's still beaming. Thank you. I'm not back. I hope that wasn't one of his nicer ties. How much clothing do regenerative masochists go through? <laughs> oh, you are bleeding more. Best date in over a hundred years. I think she might have reopened his stab wounds too. When I look up, he stumbled through the door. Is he okay to drive? Whether Teleporia can or cannot operate a car, I assume the outcome would be similarly disastrous. As he leaves, everything goes back to normal. I start busying the table. Busying? Bussing the table. The tentacles may be gone, but the tablecloth is still a mess. I get it now. That closed space must be part of the restaurant. To keep people safe from their more bizarre guests. Now that they're gone, it'll be up to Hendrik to keep everyone safe. Good luck with that. I gather the check and start walking back to the kitchen. And somehow, after a night of monsters and gore, this is the biggest surprise of the evening. He's left me a 100% tip on a dinner with steak and everything. I don't want to say that there's a price at which I'll bear this kind of treatment. I mean, what would that say about me as a person? I have pride. Still. I came here for experience and connections, and I sure experienced something tonight. Huh. My heart's still racing. The second that rift opened, I wanted to be anywhere but here. But now? I can't imagine working anywhere else. What do I need to research other restaurants for? This place is magic! The minute my shift is over, I need to have words with my manager. I don't mind that she didn't warn me. I never would have believed her. But I need to make abs- But I need to make absolutely certain. I want to have the Saturday shift. Permanently. I want to meet all the strange creatures out there and hear all their stories. This is a career. Ending one, kissing on the 293rd date. So we're getting the credits. It looks like this must have been the true ending. So we only got endings. We got one, two, four, and five. So we are still missing ending three. All right, guys. I think that this is hopefully the last ending. Uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try to kill Taliporia, the moment you've been waiting for. I slide the knife to the back of the tray and approach them. No, I can appreciate finely crafted fast smiles. So you'll come with me then? They're pretty distracted with their conversation, so they barely even notice me. Ugh, I make no promises. Why should I come to watch humans pretend to injure one another when I could just as easily go out and cause harm to actually befollow them? I place Hendrick's plate in front of him. And his cutlery. But they're so creative. You couldn't actually get away with half of the tortures in horror films. Especially not the ones nowadays. And most humans don't contain half as much blood as they show on the screen. I put Taliporia's steak down in front of her. This is true. I did enjoy the film where the woman put the men in the bags. And I grip the knife. There are a bunch of plates to stab her, places to stab her, but the big iron her chest looks like a vulnerable, easy to hit target. Oh, I am scared. Of course, that kind of sheer torment transcends language. I'm gonna regret that. I did it. I did it! I jump back. 
but her eyes immediately glaze over and shut. S Sweetie! He rushes to hold her. Just hold on! No! I was gonna grab my the knife again to defend myself, but he's right there. I need something to cut through the tentacles and get out of here. Oh, no, he's, this is serious! I can hear the heart beating in my ear! I thought this was a respectable restaurant. Oh no, it's like a switch has been flipped. He pulls the knife out of Teleporia. Do you know how long it takes her to put together a body? He sidesteps her on the table, and he's right in front of me. How long we have to wait for the veil to thin? Do you know how hard it is, getting an immoral goddess of the void to look upon humanity with anything above contempt? How hard it is to keep her eternal hunger at bay? And worst of all, she might never go out on another date with me after this! The last thing on my mind before it all goes black is agonizing pain. What? The penultimate thought. Is that maybe? He might be even scarier than the thing he summoned. Ending three. A bad idea. Alright guys, that was May I Take Your Order and all five endings. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to censor a little bit of this in post. But I had a lot of fun. I'm still a little bit disappointed that I did not get to date her. But what can you do? It looks like she's already taken and plenty happy with him. Uh, so yeah, again, my name is Kate, otherwise known as Tringer's Greetings here on YouTube and on Instagram. I hope that you guys have a lovely day and... Bye.